Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group. So in this video, we are going to achieve a Angular 18 CRUD application with local storage. So again, like this is very common scenario for if you are appearing for the interview after you clear the theoretical part, every company, whether it is a small scale or mid scale or a MNC also, they will ask you to perform a machine test. They will provide you some scenario, like this is the machine test you need to achieve. Small companies or mid scale company, they will provide you APIs also. But some companies don't provide you API. They want to see, they want to see like, are you able to perform CRUD operation without any API also? Because with API, we don't have to do much. Just API integration and that API will take care of the CRUD operation. But doing the CRUD operation with local storage or with JSON server, it's kind of a challenging because we have to write so much of code to read, write, update data. Correct. So this is just a scenario I'm going to take and how many things I'm going to cover because whenever you appear for the machine test or the interview. They will ask you to create the repository also on the GitHub. They will ask you to push the same. They will ask you to host it on the GitHub also because they will judge you on, are you aware about the repository and everything or not, correct? So starting with this, so you just have to simply log in uh, with the GitHub and you click on the new repository, then you get this page. So let's say I'm just going, uh, I'm just giving a name like angular underscore 18 crud. Okay, this is going to be my repository name, either public or private. Private will be only to you, public. Everyone can see your code and everything, right? So we are going to make it public. Then you don't have to do anything and just click on create repository. So this will create your repository. Now your repository has been created. Now next thing, so first thing is done, how to create a repository on GitHub. Next is how do we clone this repository? So we have this URL to clone it. So let's copy it. Let's go to a folder. So this is my folder. So I'm opening a command prompt over here. Git, then clone, and then my clone URL. So what we copied, enter. So, okay, sorry. I've actually wanted to show the other scenario, but I have already cloned it also. Now let's follow the same. So you can see I have, uh, or let's delete it because I wanted to show another way. What was the repository name? Angular underscore 18 underscore crud. Where it is. Yeah, let's delete this. So first I need to create a project. Then I will uh, map that project with my repository. Fine. So this is the same name I'm going to give. So let's create a project first. I have created a repository, then I'm creating a project. So CMD, NG, new, then our project name. So this is going to be my project name. Let's enter. So it's Angular 18. So it will ask you certain question like, do you need a CSS or SAS or less? So I'm simply going with CSS. Then it will ask another question. Do you need a server side rendering or not? So we will simply say no, enter. So this will create an empty project. I'm just stopping this process because I have a copy of node module. So I'm just going to use that. Let me just get that command. So this is the command which I have because I create a video, so many videos, I cannot keep so many copies of my, what do we say, node module folder. So I, I have already a node module folder for Angular 18. I will just shortcut that. So CD, V18, CD, Angular 18 crud. And here I just need to run my command. This is mkling means we are just creating a shortcut of my node module folder. Enter. So symbolic link has been created. But in your case, you don't have to stop it. You let your npm install process complete. Fine. So now if I show you, so you can see the project is created and node module folder is also there. Now this project we need to open in a VS code. So new window open folder and we need to provide our path enter so this is my path let's select folder so we have created project and that project we have opened in, in the vs code also so this is the default project now first thing first how do we run the project so you just need to open a new terminal either you can do it from over here or from over here and the menu terminal and new terminal also you can do the same so here we need to run the project 
always make sure you open the folder properly. First folder you should be your VS Code. Correct? Then only your uh, Angular CLI command will work. So ng serve. So this is the command to run my project or compile, enter. So once we enter this command, it will run Angular project and it will host it on localhost 4200 by default. You can see 4200. Let's try to open it. Localhost 4200. So you can see this is the default page we get from the app component. So our Angular project is running. Then, so either you can use material or you can use bootstrap or you can use a tailwind, any CSS framework. So I'm going, I'm just going with the bootstrap because in my node module, I have already bootstrap installed. So once you install the bootstrap, now how do you install the bootstrap also? So you, what you need to do, you just have to Google bootstrap npm. So you have to go to this site. So npm is a library package manager. There are so many libraries already put. So this is the command npmi bootstrap. So you have to copy it and then you open a new terminal and enter it. So once you enter it, it will install the bootstrap and at, that will add an entry over here also. But in my node, uh, node module, I already have it. Once you install this bootstrap, next thing in angular.json, you need to add it because this is the third party package. If you are going to use that in your project, you need to enable it. So in your angular.json, you need to add it like this, the path of it in style section. If you are going to use the JS also, you can put it over here in the script section. So after project creation, you need to install the bootstrap and you need to add the link into angular.json. Fine. Once you change, once you do some change into angular.json, make sure you run your application again. Okay. So CLS again, I will run it. Fine. Now, so this is Angular 18 project. Uh, project. So just a brief, Angular 18 doesn't have app module. It has app config. App routes will be there. It's a normal constant file. Previously, we used to have app module. Now we don't have it. And all the component in Angular 18 is standalone. So this is the only component. Now we uh, we are not going to create another component because it's just a small CRUD operation. So in app.component.ts, in this component only, we will complete our CRUD operation. Fine. Now we have loaned our project, oh, sorry, we have created project. Now this project, I need to bind it with my repository. So once you go to your repository, there are certain set of instructions. See, if your project is already created, you can follow this. So first, let's start getting it. So in your terminal, you have to just do these steps. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to link this project with my repository. So get in it. Then one by one, we can copy. Readme is already there. Now we just need to check how many files are there. So git status. So these are the files which we have created. Git add dot. It will add all the file. We are staging all the file. Then we need to commit also. Git commit minus m. Let's say initial files. Enter. Then we need to push it, git push. Sorry, we need to add a remote also. So, and before that branch, we need to change. So git minus M. Then we need to add a origin. So this is our origin, means our GitHub uh, repository URL. Then you need to push it. Wait, git you origin push. So let's copy this. And let's run it. So if everything is fine, you can see it has pushed the code. Now if I refresh, I should be able to see all the code. See, so our this repository is connected with our folder now. Fine. Now, so project is created. So in app component, we need to complete the CRUD operation. Fine. So for CRUD operation, we need a scenario. So either company will be providing to you a scenario like, uh, let's say, student app or employee app or product app, whatever it can be. Just properties will be different. But basic operations, CRUD operation we have to do. Let's consider employee app. So for employee app, and remember when you are, you are working on a machine test, so all the things which you should do, I'm going to cover. So make sure whenever you are appearing for the machine test and you are completing any machine task, so make sure you follow all those same things. Yes. 
So we have app component over here. So app component is the parent component by default and it's a standalone. So you can see the imports also over here. Now in this app component, we have to create a UI first. So let's say if we talk about, let's say employee app. So how many fields, how many fields we are going to have for employee? Let's say EMP ID, then name, city, contact number, email ID, then state, some things can be there. Properties, you can uh, take anything, or if you are pre uh, preparing for, if you are appearing for the machine test, you they will provide you, company will provide you what properties you need to have, what should be the UI, the like table or card format you need to use. They will provide you. Other, if they don't provide you the details, like how should be the UI, you can choose your own. Fine. So these are the properties we are going to have. So first, always in app folder, just create a folder, let's say model. Now we are going to create a class. So right click employee dot ts. Inside this employee dot ts, we are going to create a class. So export class employee model. How many fields we are going to have? EMP ID, data type will be number, then EMP or just go with name, data type will be string. So it should be then colon or what? No, yeah. Then let's say city, string, state, colon, string. Then we have email ID. Again, it will have a data type string, contact number, data type string. And let's get the address also. Fine. So these are the fields we have. Now you may be able to see it is saying like some error is there, but it's not error. It is asking us to initialize the property. So it's a class, so we can have an access to constructor. So let's create constructor. Always create class and interface. Don't create any object, any variable with data type any. So always, whenever you are appearing for the machine test, let me just write it. So create. <laughs> create class or interface like this. So in the constructor, you just need to initialize the properties. Address will be initialized to empty. Then city is equal to empty. This dot contact number is equal to empty. This dot email ID is equal to empty. What are the fields you have? You just need to initialize it. Employee ID, we will initialize with zero, fine. So this dot name is equal to empty. Then this dot state that is only remaining empty. Fine. So now you can see error is also gone. So first step, I have created object. Like how many fields I'm going to have in my employee object. So I have created a class for that. Let's close it. Now let's complete the UI. Now in UI, either you can, for showing the list, you can create one component and for a uh, record creation means form, you can create another component. Or in the same component, you can do the both. Okay. So I'm just going to take row column structure. So row call it. Inside this call it, I'm going to have card. Card. Then card hyphen header. Let's say dot bg success color. Inside this success, I will have just the heading. Let's say our heading will be h6 employee list and after card header i will be having card body it's very important to design ui also properly it's not just the functionality because as an angular developer you are going to design the ui also and write the code also not every company has a specific ui developer who is going to design the html you have to do it you have to do it fine so whenever you are appearing they are going to judge you on the designing skill plus coding also fine Inside this card body, again, let's create a row called 12. While designing the UI, you can add a responsive classes also. I'm not going to, I'm not adding everything, but while designing, you can do that also. And here we are going to have a table. T head. Inside T head, we will have TR, then we will have TH. So how many TH will be there? What number of properties we need to show? So let's say, Serial number, then we have name, 
contact number and email id we can show fine d head after that we need d body and we don't have a data till now but let's keep it as empty so this is call it what is remaining is call four so dot call four inside this call four again we will have a card card hyphen header dot bg success and here we will be new employee in this second card we are going to have a form card hyphen body Sorry, yeah. Fine. So see, I'm just doing this like I'm not pausing anything or not anything, right? So whenever you are designing, you should imagine your UI also. This will increase your speed. And now inside this, I need to design my form. So after row, I will have, let's say, call six. A side-by-side -side two column I will have. Here I will have label. A label with, say, name. And then we will have a text box. So input type text. Now it's a bootstrap, so we can add form control class. Fine. Now you just need to copy paste. So this will increase your speed. Now how many fields we have? Let's open it. Name we have taken. Then email ID and contact number we can take. Email ID contact number. For name, let's take a call 12. Fine. Email ID contact number is there. Then city and state is there let's add a pin code also so that we can cover that validation purpose also pin pin code let's initialize this dot pin code is equal to empty fine after city pin code we will have pin code over here then Let's copy one more time and then address. So address should be a text area because address might be a multi-line, correct? So that's why text area. Let's use the form control class over here. Pin code. Then what is remaining? All done. Fine. So this is and pin, uh, sorry, this will be address. And it should be a complete full screen. And after this row, we will need buttons also. So row dot call six. Let's add text hyphen center. We will have a button over here. BTN, BTN. Let's say secondary. A gray color we will get. It will be reset. And one more button we will be needing for save. So let's call it as success. And it will be save employee. Fine. And we will need some padding also at the top. So as I told you, you should imagine your UI also. Let's try to save and let's check if our UI is coming properly. So see, our UI is coming properly. Is it not zoom? Yeah. Right? So see, without again checking, but this is wrong. We should have 12 to this. Address should be a full screen with full window. So let's add it. So only something you, you should be remaining. But every, everything, your form should look properly. See, padding and everything I have done. Now, here we are going to have the table which will be responsible to show the data. Let's add the class also so that it takes full screen. Class, table, table. Order. Let's save. Now it should take the full screen. Got it? Now let me just add a color to the back border color because that text box is not visible properly. So for that form control class, I will be overriding. So here you can see background color is there now. Border. Let's add border 1px solid. Great. 
important fine so now it will it is properly visible let's make it a dark one little bit let's take the blue shade fine now we just need to add this to a let's copy and what we need to import uh, what we need to write the form control class so form hyphen control and with not important it will be overridden that form all the elements css see now the border is coming properly fine so ui is done interface also we have created then let me just write the steps also so first create class and interface design ui that is the next step then you can start for the coding so now how do we start so we have created in class like how many properties we are going to have correct here we have employee id which should be we are considering unique because when we actually integrate with the api now with every api we will get something unique primary key but since it is a local storage but still we should have something in a unique that will identify each record for that we have added this employee id and while initializing we have initialized that with zero so first thing we have created our ui so first thing we just need to bind that with our form so either you can go for the reactive or the template form in machine test always try to go for the reactive because everyone is going with the template template is very easy but in reactive form you you can display your skill correct so i'm just going to go with the reactive form so before starting reactive form i have to first import reactive form module so reactive form module it's not suggesting so let's import first forms and here we can write reactive form model don't go for the template because everyone is going to template something should be there now which will set apart you from my other correct now here i'm going to create a reactive form so how many fields we are going to have just like how many properties we have correct so let's say employee form colon form group is equal to new form group round bracket curly bracket enter or instead of declaring it over here let's initialize like this only it will allow us to it will throw the error like we need to initialize it let's add undefined fine now we have created employee form group now i will create a method create form and inside this method i will initialize this form so this dot employee form is equal to new form group round bracket curly bracket enter and in constructor i will just initialize this function this function i will call it over here in actual industry also we follow this structure that's why i'm that's why i'm covering like this so now this should not be needed oh still it is needing because if we initialize this over here now then that error will go away because in the constructor we have initialized but it's not reading like in the in this function also we are doing the same thing it's not reading so instead of that let's add a question mark this also will make it optional fine now in this form we have to initialize the control how many control what number of properties we have so emp id colon new form control now you might know we have created interface so now this interface we can use it so this object also we can create it over here so employee obj data type employee model and it's a class so we can initialize this also this dot new sorry employee model like this okay i will come to this why we are creating like this fine those who have not seen a way like this so this is new and this is what we follow when we work on an industrial project so you might know like when we create the control here we specify the initialization employee id was zero right then let's say name what was the field we have name only name colon new form control and it's a string property we initialize with empty instead of this we can bind this object over here so this dot employee object dot employee id so what i'm doing 
this control I'm binding with my object. You will come to the use case or what is the benefit of this doing this. You will come to know when we do the edit part. Fine. This dot employee object dot name. Fine. Let me just copy paste this. Fine. Then name, then city. Address. Contact number. Email ID. What else is there? Pin code and the state is internally. So what number of fields you have, those number of controls you will be creating. Just you just have to copy paste the control name. Try to learn the shortcut way to increase the development speed. Fine. Whatever will come, I'm just going to explain that because you have a very less time to do the machine test. Sometimes in small companies, they will ask you to share the screen and do the live coding there. So if you have that shortcut ways of using and which increase the speed, that will also showcase you like you are a good developer. Fine. So we have created our form. Now this form, we need to bind it to our HTML form. So whenever we are, de uh, we are dealing with the reactive form, always make sure you have a form tag. So let's create a form tag. And our whole form should be inside this form tag, including the save and the cancel button. Fine. Now we have to bind this form with our form. So square bracket form group is equal to, we have to provide our form name. That is nothing but employee form. This you have to provide it over here. Means this form we are connecting with this element, with this form, which we have created. Why it is giving error? Okay, saying like it's undefined. How we are going to manage this? because while creating we have initialized that let's initialize it new form group let's initialize this it was giving error because while creating we said it might be undefined so that's why it was giving error so anyway we have initialized that fine now this form we have connected it to the react reactive form group object now in every element we need to bind our form controller name is equal to this is going to be connected with the name now a shortcut tree in every element we need to add this so what you can do input type text so what you need to do you just need to copy paste this with this you are going to replace it like this not it so this is how you can do let's save now, what you need to do, what you need to do, you just need to change the properties name. For that, also see, open it side by side. And you can just copy paste quickly. So this is email ID. It will go over here. Then contact number we have. Copy paste. Then we have city. Then we have state. It will be here, pin code, it will go over here and the address, the address will go over here. Fine. So let's just save and check if we have any error or not. So if everything is fine, we should not have any console error. Always try to keep your console on so that we can see if error, error, any error is there. Fine. This you can ignore. Now we have created form and that form we have successfully binded to our HTML form also. Next, we need to write the CRUD operation. Fine. So now on click of save, we need to save the employee to the local storage. So let's write click event over here on save round bracket. Let's create this function. Now I will just close this. So you can just focus on HTML.ts part only now. Fine. Now here, so as I said, like employee ID should be unique. So how do we create a unique employee ID by checking how many records are there in our local storage firstly. If it is one record is there, next should be two ID. If two records are there, next employee ID should be three, like that. So we will increment it. So first we will read how many uh, data currently in the local storage we have. So old data, local storage, 
dot get item and we will store the data into let's say employee emp data like this and here we need to add a if check if in the local storage we have the data we will get it otherwise it will be null so if all data is not equal to null means we don't have any uh, we have some data in the local storage so we just need and while storing the data into the local storage we are going to convert it into string format so that's why while reading the data again we need to convert it back to the array format so for parse data is equal to json dot parse method we have to use and we will pass the local storage data whatever the data we get from the local storage and here we need to add a length check parse pa rsa so here we will get the array so pass data dot length sorry we don't need the length if condition check we know if uh, in the local storage we have the data there will be record so now this dot employee form dot controls or we don't need it actually this dot employee form in the form only we will set it form dot controls store bucket what do we need to set employee id so employee id dot set value we are going to set the value in the particular form control what it will be in the parse data we are going to get the length of array so dot length plus one fine when i debug this code then you will understand properly let me just complete this writing so then we need to push the data to the local storage so when page load we are going to read the data from the local storage also so that will be we will be storing into employee list colon data type of this employee model over here square bracket is equal to empty fine once we read once the page load we are going to read the data also let's do that also so in the constructor we will read the data constant local data is equal to same thing the same if condition we can write over here so once the page load means the once the component load is constructed will execute and in constructor we are trying to read the local storage data then again we need to parse it also so this same line will go over here and whatever the data we have got that we need to store into this variable so this dot employee data is equal to parse data fine so only if if the data is there right and then otherwise this employee list will be empty so what we need to do this dot employee list dot unshift and what we need to unship form value so this is dot employee form dot value fine so we will get the value over here and this is on save so first check is like if we don't have any data if we have the data in the local storage or else means this is the first time we are trying to insert the data then we can directly use this line so whatever the by default employee id is zero so that we are directly assigning it over here let's just add a debugger then you will properly understand here also i'm adding debugger and in the constructor also i will be adding a debugger let's save and let's check it now wait i think we didn't save html and everything properly why it is saying on save doesn't exist on save is there this function only we have created over here let me just check what is wrong let us just try reloading let's open the console and let's check so once i reload my component will again reinitialize so we are in the constructor see now if we have 10 so now you can see in the old data we got null because currently in the local storage we don't have any data matching that particular key let me just remove everything clear that's why we didn't get anything let me reload again so currently in the local storage we don't have any data so we will get null over here 
So if it is not null, if it if it is null, means it's not going to the if statement. Let's continue. Now we are trying to save the first record. Let's say Sachin email ID. Let's say Sachin at the rate dummy dot com contact number. Let's enter dummy contact number. City Pune State M A H pin code one one two two three three and some address. Fine. Now on click of save, we need to debug. So this we have already added the debugger. Now on click of save, you can see our code is over here. Again, we are trying to read the local storage data. We know we don't have it. So it will go to the else block. And in else block, what we are doing in the employee list, we are just trying to push the value. So see over here, whatever the data we filled that we have got in the value employee form value and that we are pushing it over here. But again, we missed one thing. Wait, why? what is the error we have got? Let it be. So once we store the data, once we push the data to this, what do we need to do? We need to store this array into local storage. So local storage dot set item. And the key name will be the same which we are using this EMP data. And value. So local storage data can only in local storage, we can only store string type of data. So we what we have to do, this is the array. So we have to convert it back to the string format. So JSON dot stringify and we need to pass the array like this. Now in both the condition, either if or else, we need to store the data. So instead of putting it in the else block, we will store this into after the if else block. Let's try once again. Now if I pass the value, searching, Add some dummy address now on click of save. So, if we check the local storage data, we don't have anything right now apart from this uh, log level. Let's debug the code now. F10, F10, it will go to the else block. We are pushing the form value into this array. So, now in the employee array, you can see we have one, we have got one element, and that same data we are storing in the local storage. If we continue. So in the local storage, you can see in EMP data, we have got an array. Now, if we reload, so see, now in the old data, we have got the data, but it is in the string format, double quotes. So it's not null, so it will go to that. And in the parse data, you can see we have got the array format of data. See over here, old data we have got in the string format. We have converted that again to the array format by using json.parse. So we have got array. And this array, we are assigning it to the employee list. Got it? Now let's try to save second record. Let's name him Aditya. Employee ID Adi at the rate dummy.com. 3344-5566 Pune or Mumbai. MAH. Address something. On click of save. So now in the local storage, we have the data. So if block will execute. Got it? So here we have got the current uh, records. So only one record is there. So length plus one so now we are just updating the id so see in the form value you will be able to see employee id as two because in the date in the local storage we have one record so next employee id unique id is two that we are pushing it to this array and that whole array again we are storing to the array uh, means our local storage now if we read the data sorry so see over here in the employee list, we have got two records. One is having employee ID zero and second is having employee ID two. Got it? Now we are try we are able to save the data. Now we just, we have read the data and stored into this array also. We just need to display that in the, over here. Now, this is Angular 18. So before Angular 17, we used to iterate the TR by using ng for directive. But from Angular 17, we have got control flow statement that is at the rate for loop di directly we can write. So at the rate for directly we can write. So on which element? Employee list. Whatever the TR you want to iterate that you can write it over here. How many TD, how many TH we have? That many TD we can have it over here. 
four. So first is the serial number. So dollar index, we get the serial number. Again, we'll let use the interpolation. By default, in, it will start from the zero, so plus one. And over here, we need to display item dot, what we need to display name. So name will go over here. Let's copy paste. Then contact number and then email ID. So let's save and check if we are able to display the information or not. So see, whatever the local storage data we have, that is available over here. Let's try to create one more record. Summon. Let's try to record image. Let's on click of save. You can see data is also visible over here. Got it? So get part is done. We are able to read the data. That data we have shown. Save is also done. Now next thing is we should be able to edit and the delete. So for edit, we have to add one, one more column with the edit and the delete button. So let's go to HTML. Here we will add one more action that will have action, uh, th as action. And then we will need one more TD. Let's create a button over here. Class btn btn hyphen primary. Let's make it as edit. And let's create one more button for the delete also. It will be danger mx2. And this will be with delete. So we have edit and the delete button. Let's see if it is coming properly. Yes. Now let's just align it to center also. Class text center. As I said, you designing will also matter when you are appearing for the machine test because you will be judged on every code you are writing. Got it? Now this looks proper. Now on click of edit, we need to call a function. So click on edit and we need to pass the current object means item. We will pass it over here. Let's create this function. Now, while calling this function, we are going to pass a parameter. So item colon. And what will be the data type? Same employee model. Like this. Now, whatever the data we get, that we need to assign it to our employee object is equal to day item. And then we just need to call these functions. And this function will initialize with the object we have got. That was that's why we had provided our employee object over here. So we just need to call this function now. So this dot create form function we will call. So it will initialize the form with the value we have. Let's save and check. Now if we click on the edit, you can see that data is visible. If we click on search in, see, getting it. Now if we are in the edit mode instead of save, we have to show the update button. How do we know like it is a save mode or update mode? If in the employee ID, we don't have zero, means it is a save record. But I, one more mistake we have done while initializing, we are initializing with zero. So it should be one just for the first time. Fine. So here, let's copy this button and one more button. Now, one more new feature in the Angular 18 at the rate if log. So what do we write? We need to check employee form dot control square bracket single quote what we need to check employee id if employee id is zero or employee id is uh, one means we are in the initial uh, we are in the create mode one we are in the create mode so if it is one we have to show save employee button or else at the rate else Make sure you are using control flow statement as much as you can because this is the new thing. Okay. And you need to follow it. And here, update employee button will be there. Let's change current color to warning. And instead of save on update function, let's create this function. For update, we need to write a little bit logic. Let's just check if we are able to show the button or not. So if we click on it, so by default, you can see save employees button is there. If I click on edit, you can see update employees there. Got it? Now, on update, what we need to do, since we don't have API, so we have the array, in that array only, we need to change the values. So first, we need to find the data from the array. So record is equal to this dot employee list. In the employee list only, we have all the data dot find. 
that's why we had a unique employee ID so that we can compare with EMP ID is equal to this dot employee form. Where was it? We need to pass the employee ID. So this dot employee form dot controls your packet employee ID dot value. Fine. So here we will get the value. We are trying to filter the particular record with the matching employee ID, whatever the record we are updating. Whenever, one more thing, whenever you are trying to read the data, whenever you are trying to filter the data. So in case of find, always you should add a null undefined check. And in case of filter, you have to add a length check. Not equal to undefined. Because if we don't find the existing rec matching record, you will get it undefined. So whatever the code you are writing, that should be in the undefined condition. So if it is undefined, if it is not undefined, we just need to change the values. So whatever the value we have and this dot employee form dot control like this one by one property you need to do. I'm just going to add some more properties. The remaining you can do. So let's say name I will change and contact number I will change. Like this you can do for remaining fields. And again, we are changing the data in the array itself, but we need to store the data again. So the same line, we can do it over here. Again, some lines are repetitive, but again, I will optimize the code, but we will just complete the basic flow first on click of update. And once update is done, we need to reinitialize our model. New employee model. like this and again we need to call this function so that my form will reinitialize again same thing we can do in case of after add also over here also let's save and check if we are able to do the update process so if we check if we want to update the aditya record name was aditya let's say tare and on click of update data is wait something is wrong so let's try to refresh Wait, let me check what is wrong. Because if we update, the first record also got updated. Sam record. Why it got updated? Let's try the second record. Let's try the Sachin. Let's try Sachin SSS. Why it is updating the first record only? Let's try to debug. On click of update. three on click of update let's see what we are doing wrong so in the value we oh value is coming null why value is coming null employee id value is coming null and the remaining thing yeah remaining thing is there just employee id is coming null or something but why on click of edit, we are assigning. Let's add, let's check the on edit function. Or in the create method, we have in, initialized everything. Let's see what is happening wrong. So I think on click of edit, something is wrong. Let's add a debugger on on edit. So once we click on on edit, we are getting everything. Employee ID is two. And that we are assigning to the employee object. Two is there, then we are calling this function. Let's add a debugger over here. So here employee ID is, oh, capital small. So see, here employee ID is capital and here we are uh, using it as capital. So that's why it is very important to have everything same. So here we, instead of capital and small thing was there. So let's get employee ID capital everywhere. I think done. Let's try one more time. Now it should update properly. So these are the normal issues you will face when we actually perform the crowd operation. Somewhere it is breaking. Okay, here also EMP ID small was there. Let's try. Fine. Now, now such in record we will try to update or the second one. 
So Aditya, to Aditya two two. Let's click on update and let's debug it also. So here you can see we have got the particular record, right? And the name new name we are assigning to Aditya named Aditya two two. Continue, continue. Ah, it is coming this pop up. So see the record got updated. So now update is possible. Now, if we have to delete, how we are going to delete? So for delete, let's create a function. So round bracket, click on delete. And we need to pass the whole object. So we can pass the object or just ID is also, you know, because employee ID, what we need. And by using that ID only, we are going to delete. Let's create the function. Now for this function, we are going to receive an ID. So ID colon number. And over here, on click of delete, we need to show that pop-up. Are you sure want to delete or not? So constant is delete. We can make use of confirm pop-up. Just like alert, we have confirm. But here we can show the message. Are you sure want to delete? And if on in case of confirm, we get OK and the cancel button. If user clicks on OK, we get two over here. Otherwise, false. So if it is true, then only we need to remove. So this is the array where we have all the data. So from this array, we can remove the data. So this dot employee list dot splice. And no, sorry. So first we need to find the index from that array. So constant index is equal to this dot employee list dot find index and the condition m dot with what we need to compare with employee ID is equal to is equal to ID. So here we will get the index and this index we need to pass it to remove and how many record we need to remove only one. So this new array again we need to push to the local storage. So let's write this. Let's save and check. So now if we try to delete this Aditya delete. If we click on cancel nothing is happening. Again, if we click on delete and if we click on OK, so record got deleted. Let's try to refresh it again. See, that record is not there. So these are the whole operation you need to do when we are working on a machine test. Now comes the validation. So this is the form. So comma, square bracket, validators dot required. And this should not be. Instead of this, we can put it over here. So on name, I'm adding, adding required and pin code, I will add the required and the main name. Remaining thing you can add. In for pin code, I'm adding uh, min length. So min length. So we know like minimum six, uh, six character is what we need, right? So on the name and the pin code, we have added the validation. So over here in the form also, we need to show that validation so that we can do text hyphen danger. And over here, we can have a span. Now here, we can have at the rate statement. Condition will be employee form dot controls square bracket. What do we need to say? Name dot touch if that particular text box is touch or not. If it is touch, then in the span tag, again, we will need one more if statement and the rate if. What will be it if we have the required error or wrong? Dot errors square bracket dot what it will be required. And inside this, we will have this span tag. And here we can say name is required. Just like this, I will now copy paste. And for the pin code. So first error will be per required. Then just like this, again, we will have at the rate if, and then we will have min length. And here we can show minimum six characters required. Fine. So we have added two types of validation. Let's just save and check the validation. So if you click on by default validations are not coming. If you touch any text box, so see, Wait, why everywhere? Oh, okay, I think we forgot to change it. So why doing copy pasting, you need to do it properly also. 
So C, name is required coming. If I pass any value, that is going away. Or pin code also, required is coming. If I pass some value, again, it is showing second validation. If I pass six character, then it is going away. So if form is invalid, I need to disable this button also. So we can do that also. So we can get the form valid value by using this form. So we have this save and the cancel button. So let's add a disabled flag form dot invalid. The same thing we have to do it on the save and the update. So let's save and check. Unless form is not valid, our button should be disabled. Say it is disabled. Let's add a proper value. Omesh and only pin code is mandatory. See, once I provide the six value, button got enabled. This is how you add the validation. And on click of reset, you just need to reset the form. So for that, let's call a click function and we can directly call this create form function. But it won't initialize. Let's create one more function. Reset because we first need to initialize the model. So that will be like this. So these two thing. So this is repetitive now. So we can have a reset over here and this function we can call after save. So now we are reducing our code. And same code we will need it once we update also. Over here. Got it? And the same function, reset function, we need to call it over here also. So let's save and check everything. I think I have covered every possible scenario now. Right? Again, if I start typing and let's say I decide I don't want it, I want to reset. So on click of reset. Wait, why it is not? Yeah. But why it showed the validation message? Button type. Okay. Type. Button always make sure you add the type button. Otherwise, you might face by default submit will be there and you will face issue. Let's try again. And now if I click on reset, you can see it is getting reset. Again, if I click on edit, reset is also happening. So this is everything what you are expected to do when it comes to a machine test. Fine. So that's it. If you are okay or if you are able to perform the same what I have done, please do like and subscribe and help me to grow my channel. So that's it. Thank you guys. Please do like.